I'm on vacation. You think I'm brushing my hair? I'm not even brushing my teeth. I don't cut the toenails. The list goes on and on. You're lucky I'm wiping my ass at this point. Anyway, I don't know. I went to the hospital the other night. That's right. Oh, health scare. Health scare. Do you, you want a good YouTube video? Just write health scare next to the title. Whoever's channel it is. Health scare. Everybody goes running over there. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like rubbernecking. I never understood it. Rubbernecking is a real thing. Happens right here in Long Island, New York. You kidding me? Long Island, we got these Long Island fat pig housewives with nothing going on in their life. So they enjoy the misery of others. Oh, Long Island, Long Island, it's, Long Island's such a cocksucking place to live. Somebody gets into a car accident, everybody's like, oh, what, what happened? Is there any blood, honey? Do you see any intestines on the street? Yeah. So I, I drive by, I don't even look. On principle. My wife climbing out the window to get a better view. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see anybody's... I don't want to see it. It's not my business. I want to go to fuck home. How about that on for size? You fucking people. You're in a rush every other day of your life. Everybody in a fucking rush. Anyhow, I mean, if we're going to start this story, let me, let me tell you right now that I, I can't see blood. Okay? It's a thing I've had since I was a kid. I found out when we... We went down to the beach, and I, I hopped out of the Jeep, and my father slammed the door on my finger, my pinky finger. And I remember looking down at my finger, and it was all bloody. And I remember my father, like, wiping it off, you know, like, he's like, you'll be all right, you'll be all right. And uh, then I just got dizzy, and I passed out. And I actually passed out and rolled underneath the Jeep. Yeah, the, my parents didn't even know where I went. I, I, and it wasn't like a like I did a barrel roll under the Jeep and then passed out. It was like after the passing out happened and my body went into a fucking spin. What do you want me to tell you? I went screwing underneath the fucking Jeep. I said, I wish at that point somebody would have turned it on and fucking hit the gas pedal. Get me out of this hell hole. I said... Anyhow, my parents are like, hey, where did he go? <laughs> what, is he swimming already? He would jump in the ocean or something? No, I was under the Jeep, passed out. They had to pull me out. And that's when we learned that our son is a big embarrassment. Ow. That's right. I, I can't see blood. I pass out. Like, like, how are you supposed to fight in a war? I was like, I, my family is a series of war heroes. Do you understand? My great-grandfather. World War One, my grandfather. World War Two, captured prisoner. My father, Vietnam. What the fuck did I do? I, I saw blood and I passed out. You hear that? I'm carrying on the scene, everybody. I mean, what, what, what is it? What my, what my, but what is my son gonna do? Eat ice cream and fall into a casket? I don't know what's going on, man. Can I have coffee for crying out, Crin? Oh. Oh. It's piping hot, but it's great. I've been making killer coffee lately. You, you, these things take time. When I tell you, it took me at least 30 years to learn how to squat. And that's the truth, and I'm still not doing it right. Same thing with coffee, god damn it. it takes a long fucking time. Everybody thinks you figure everything out like this, this. I love pe people come up to me with their projects. Well, I'm building a walk-in closet for my wife, and uh, 
I should have it done by Thursday. And you're like, okay, T minus add an additional three months to that project. I got a guy that's been working on his kitchen for three years now. Oh yeah, just when just oh is it done? No, just uh it's gotta do spackling around the window. You ever go over somebody's house, the whole the whole kitchen's remodeled, but there's no trim around the window yet, and it stays like that for nine years. It's always something. Oh, I gotta hook up I, we're, we're waiting on the countertops. I'm like, you fucking started this kitchen two years ago. Yeah, you know, supply chain issues, this type of thing. These are the me these are the real men that you're gonna meet in your life, okay? And they do this on purpose. You know, when your wife comes in with a, with a fucking screwy Louie ideas, boink, doink, 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 zip, bang, boom, boink, doink, doink, boom, crash, boom, crash. And you're like, what, are you, what is it now? I feel like I'm gonna get attacked by Conky. Today, we're gonna build out a new section of the house. Today we're going to attempt to install crown molding, even though it's fucking impossible. <laughs> so I say, here she comes, like a fucking, I, I don't know, like a fucking thunderstorm coming at me. <laughs> ah, God damn it, it never ends. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, to make a long story short, me and my wife on the couch watching a movie. I roll over, go to sleep. This is this is from the perspective of the evening, okay? I wake up, I'm dizzy. I'm like cold, sweat, dizzy. I'm like, oh man. I was like, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And I get up and I go to, to stand and I, I sit back down immediately. I said, babe, something's wrong. Next thing you know, she gets up and I black out. I wake up to my wife, like slapping me in the face, throwing water at me. She says, I'm white, pale as a ghost. My lips are white. She told that she's thinking I'm dead. And I, I remember my first reaction. I was like, damn it, I'm still alive. And, uh, and no, I was like, what's going on here? This is, uh, you know, what the hell happened? I'm thinking to myself, maybe I'm having a heart attack or a stroke or something. I was like, this is how it happens, like out of nowhere. So the whole time I'm in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. So... Let me tell you something. You know how they say when you pet you die, you see the light and it feels so good? I said, I don't know, baby. <laughs> You're going to see me doing a backstroke to that fucking bitch. Come on, let's get out of here right now to the light, baby. <sighs> anyway. So she's like calling 911. I'm like, oh my God. The first thing I can think to myself is, did I take any like steaming shits today? Because they're going to, you know what they do? They love to cut your pants off with a scissor. I'm like, I got a zipper and a button. Can we just take them off? You know, for crying out, Crin, these are my new Lee jeans, my new Lee Wranglers. They're like hospital scrubs to begin with, they have so much room inside of them. Anyhow, I'm like, ah, oh, did I cut my toenails lately? Because that's all I need to do. I'm like, I don't need a hot nurse yanking off my sock and then seeing my fucking corn chip toenails that, 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 calm, that calm around like a fucking armadillo. Okay? And to be honest with you, each of my toes look like they're wearing a goalie mask. So that's how it breaks down. So th there's always a hot nurse, you know, she pulls off your foot. She's like, oh my God, I wish she was dead. Can't we just euthanize him right now? I don't know, stick some bleach in his arteries. They fucking come and they put me in a goddamn, like a wheelchair. I'm like, what is, is this necessary? I was like, I can walk. Where do we gotta go? Cause I started feeling better. As soon as, you know, a a after I was done, uh, 
uh, dying for 30 seconds. Then I felt fine. I was like, I was coming back around and, and whatnot. And they're like, no, we got to, you're going to the hospital. Your blood pressure is like down to 50 or something like that. Whatever. I'm like, this was an everyday occurrence as I was a kid. My, my mother used to take me to the doctor to get B12 shots before the holidays. So we didn't look half dead. You have no idea. You have no fucking idea. Anyway, they want to stick me in this wheelchair. I'm like, I don't want to be in a wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? And they're strapping me in. And it's not even a wheelchair with wheels, so you can roll out of there with dignity. It was like something they put Cleopatra on. It was a chair with handles in the front and the back. And I'm looking at these guys, and they weren't exactly Franco Colombo. I said, these guys are going to lift me out of here like a chariot or something? I said, highly embarrassing. So I come out of the fucking house like uh, I, I don't know, like uh, like I'm I'm a princess or something. They're carrying me out of the house, this big fucking chair. I said, number one, I've seen this happen before. I see these videos where a guy on a stretcher takes a fucking a header. They strap you in so that when you do take a header, you break your neck. The guy trips down this. He says he's gonna trip on the staircase and fall down. And I'm going for a fucking ride of my life. Yeah. I'm going to be eyeballs first into the hedges. And then I, you know what? They're carrying me down and then all the neighbors got to come out. I'm like, really? What? What is this fucking TMZ? God almighty. Got women out there, they got their camera phones on. Can I have a little dignity? I love it. They take me out of my house. They, they take me out of the house. I have jeans and a t-shirt on, right? And they take me out. It's like 30 degrees outside. And I'm like this. I'm like... <laughs> and the guy goes, are you cold? I said, oh, you, you couldn't tell by the fucking uh, convulsions and handball size fucking goosebumps on my arms? I don't know. They throw me in the back of the meat wagon. That's all I can think to myself when they push me in the ambulance there. I said, ah, I'm in the meat wagon. Felt like telling the guys, you know, first time in the meat wagon, you know? And I'm sitting there and the fucking guy starts coming at me with a needle. And I said, hold on a second here, pal. <laughs> I don't know if you realize what just happened. But you come near me with that needle and we're going to have the same incidents happen all over again. I said, I can't have that needle right now. I'm going to pass out. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I, I got so much going through my head right now. You go to jam me with that needle. I'm going to pass out. And then he gives me this big thing like, all right, I tried to administer it. Like he's talking into a microphone to, to, to get rid of liability. I tried to give it to him, but he wouldn't take it. I tried. I tried. He doesn't want it. He's refusing. He's refusing. I said, listen, pal, I just don't want to fucking pass out. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. They got you on a stretcher. Let me let me tell you something what it is right now. That rolling stretcher, a gurney. They got me on this gurney, a.k.a. the backbreaker 2000. I said, this thing is the most uncomfortable thing. Does it have any fucking lumbar support? I said, forget about the passing out. You're going to take me in for back surgery on this goddamn thing. And I, I used to be under the impressions that, that an ambulance got somewhere quickly. It took forever and a fucking day in this thing. I was like, can you turn on the sirens? I know I'm not like bleeding from the chest, but can you turn on the fucking sirens? Let's make a party out of it. All this lollygagging. I don't know. They bring me into the hospital and they got this, I don't know, this Ukrainian nurse, like smoking hot. We're talking like, a, she's almost, a, she's like a nine, a solid nine and a half. 
And she's got the scrubs on. I mean, do I got to tell you to tend some pump and down the hair? They push you in the hallway, of course, because there's no room anywhere, you know? Oh, they want your insurance card first. That was like first thing when they're at the house. They're like, uh, by the way, you have insurance? Uh, can we see your insurance card? Do you have your wallet? Can we go through your, your uh, personal files here, your social security number? Can I have your birth certificate? It's like, all right, listen, you're going to get paid. Can you get me, get me the fuck out of here? Anyhow. She's like, I need to put the probes on you. I was like, you do whatever you want, baby. And hey, while you're down there, let's not forget about that hundred and fucking fifty billion we sent over to the Ukraine. I said, listen, can we get a Hans Blowy for it at least? For crying out loud. I'm sick of it already. If I go to the Ukraine, I'm going there with my pants down. All right, girls, you know what to do. This is prepaid. Okay, I got my punch card right here. American taxpayer. That should be like when you go to Domino's 10 times and they punch your card and then you get, I don't know, free cheese sticks. I mean, I'm here for my cheese sticks. All right, so there it is. Start blowing. Hey, do you think the money grows on trees? I don't see any shortage of parties going on in the Ukraine right now. I'm watching, I watch TV. They're partying down there. I said, fuck it, fuck it, fuck a. Hey, I better get free drinks at that bar. Let's stop farting around here. For God's sakes. Then she lifts the shirt to put it, put on my, like she lifts my shirt and my two fucking like man tits flop out. Everybody's there, you know, in the hallway to conducting business. There's some crazy lady in the next room that's trying to like subdue her. I'm like, didn't you guys watch Terminator 2? Just give her a fucking shot of Clorox in the neck. End of story. I got people bumping into my feet. My feet are hanging off the gurney. Yeah. All right. The, 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 I don't know why. It's like I slid down. They had the thing. The, the, they had the thing angled toward the ground. I'm sliding out. It was giving me a wedgie. I'm, it feels like a torture chamber. I, when you go to a hospital, you realize, oh, this is the place for uh, for death to happen. Basically, don't go to a hospital. It's just a big death house. It really is. You sit on the bed, you get MRSA. You kidding me? The only saving grace to this place was the fucking, the rack of tits that would pass by every once in a while. It's the only thing keeping me alive in that jerk. So anyway, she's sticking probes on me. My tits are shaking around. People are looking. I'm like, this is so undignified. Anyway, they bring me to the little, like, curtain room, you know? And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and I'm like, holy shit. It just dawned on me. We, me and my wife were watching that movie, uh, No Country for Old Men. And did you see the part where, like, I, the one guy gets, like, shot in the leg or something like that? So he, like, breaks into a pharmacy, gets all these hypodermic needles, like, antibiotics and stuff like that. And he goes to the hotel, and he's got, like, a tourniquet or something like that. And he's picking the bullet casings or the, the bullet out of the fucking, out of the gaping wound in his leg. And then he's sticking, like, needles in it to numb it or use antibiotic. And I was watching that, and I was thinking to myself, oh, my God, I was getting queasy in my stomach. So I rolled over, and I just went to sleep. And I said, Jesus Christ, what must have happened is I must have started dreaming about it. And just that idea of that bloody, like, surgery scene was probably going off in my head. And when I woke up, I was, like, sick from it. And now I was sitting there and I'm like, how am I supposed to tell my wife this now? That I'm in the hospital because of a bloody movie scene. And I love gory movies. There's nothing better than like Dawn of the Dead when he blows the guy's head off. Come on. But for some reason, because it was like a surgery thing, I don't know what it was. It kind of kind of just made me gro like gross me out. Just 
So, I mean, that was the name of that tune. Hey, watch out. Watch out when you're watching movies. You might end up in the hospital. I mean, wasn't that, wasn't that the thing with The Exorcist back in the 70s? Everybody wanted to... Uh, everybody that saw The Exorcist when it came out, they were running out of the movie. Running out of the movie theater, throwing up. Like, really? What kind of bullshit is that? Next thing you know, I'm in the hospital. I said, oh, look at that one. Anyway, so everything's good. Each, yeah, I took the, she gave me the EKG. I said, how's the heart day? They said, the heart day's good. I said, okay, let's parte. You know what I'm saying? Guys, can I tell you right now, me and my wife, we snuck right out of the hospital. When I realized what actually happened, and I was just, uh, I, I told my wife, and she looked at me like even a lesser of a man. I said, hey, give me my shoes and uh, let's get the fuck out of here. And we just up and left. I don't know. Actually, we asked, we, we said we were going to leave because they wanted me to stay the night for testing. Of course. Of course. I said, ah, not the type of uh, vacation I'm looking for. I said, let's get out of here. Me and my wife, I put on my shoes, we bounced. I'm sure they'll get. They'll have no problem getting the bill to me anyhow. <sighs> I don't know. What do you want to talk about? We talk about. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. Mm. You know what? I I went down to the car show the other day, and there was a guy with a 93 Mercury Cougar there, okay? There's a certain kind of child molester that drives a 1993 cougar now don't get me wrong wait a second here my parents had one that's fine back then okay but now the the glasses you instantly think of the serial killer glasses okay uh this an absolute maniac of a human being would drive this car at this point. It was, listen, I remember, but I have a guy at work who had one. He had the 90, 94, 95 Cougar, okay? V6, so you already know you're talking about just a piece of shit on wheels, okay? And I remember he had like 200, he would brag, he had 246,000 miles on it. And he went, and the transmission finally just like, fell out of the car. Remember when people used to t t tell you about that? Like, they'd tell you about how a transmission fell like fell on the floor. You're like, no, that's a bullshit story. It never happened. He shifted a gear and the transmission fell on. I, 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 all right, listen. What are we talking about here? So blew the transmission on his car, finally. The car just wanted to die. And he goes to the transmission shop. And he gets a new transmission, a rebuilt transmission, and he gets, they, they swindled him for the lifetime warranty. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> and this rube comes into work the next day, like, oh, you have no idea. He just, somebody gave him the key to the city, telling everybody about his lifetime warranty on his transmission. I had no time for it. I said, what? I said, you got a lifetime warranty on a transmission for a car that has 246,000 miles on it? Okay, I blow on that front end and it comes apart. I said, you are probably closest to the biggest disgraziato person on planet Earth right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta love people. Oh, Crimla. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. You got these dumb bastards. You know when you're in a break room eating, somebody's got to come up to you. Oh, somebody's eating good today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always something. I remember a guy was eating. He was eating. Uh, his mo his wife made him like this taco salad. So I had like ground beef on top. And this little Filipino girl comes in and she goes. She goes, oh my God, what is that, chocolate? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> and he got so aggravated. <laughs> ah, it's one of the funniest things. Oh, God. Threw my back out laughing. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. You got some spaghetti and meatballs there? Just shut the fuck up, will ya? For crying out loud. People shut up in the break room already. You got people that like to comment on the news. Remember when that fucking Columbia shuttle went down? Whatever it was. It, 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 there's a Columbia shuttle. I'm in the break room, right? And some this is a long time ago. Some spacecraft blew up and out of space somewhere. That was trying to land oh it was taking off i don't know what was happening it was coming in for a landing okay from orbit and the goddamn thing blew to smithereens and then we got the woman from food court comes in she's got a bottle of windex in her hand and she looks up this uh, at the tv screen this is a woman that smokes about five packs of fucking virginia slims a day and she goes no oh. I guess they entered the atmosphere at the wrong angle. I was like, oh my God, here we go. MIT engineer, that's right. Lead, uh, lead person in charge of uh, telemetry at NASA. Can you imagine some people? Can you imagine some people? I don't know. You got this guy that set himself on fire out there, right in front of fucking, I don't know, set himself on fire. I, I don't know. You know, if I did set myself on fire, it would probably be e followed by an immediate, yow, sir, this hurts. I mean, you got to admire the discipline of somebody that can just sit there and, and sit there like the monks. The monks did it. Very creepy. Very creepy thing to do. Set yourself on fire. Oof. Oof. I'm getting queasy just thinking about it. <sighs> Honestly. Bro. What's that? You don't have anything better to do, guys? I don't know if you figured this out by now. This is like going nowhere fast. Javiel comes in the backyard the other day, saw in the air, waving to me with my circular saw. Hey, Yassi! Hey, yes, I know, circular saw comes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Are you, do you ever come back with a cup of coffee? That's the kid, that's the part that kills me. Dull the blade, cut the cord, ruin the saw, fix it, and then show it to me like you're so proud. I love it. He he repairs the, the cord in two spots. And he comes, see, see, look, I fixy, I fixy. I, you fixy, you also brokey. Okay, maybe you left that one out. You brokey, you brokey twice. I love it. I'm supposed to roll out the red carpet and, and stop popping bottles of champagne because you repaired something you broke.
Where does the saw go? On the bench. I'll take it and put it down into the crate that requires bending over. Thank you for the additional fucking part of that job. Don't, 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 please don't put it back where you found it. No, 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 no. Why don't you have my wife roll up the extension cord while you're at it? I'm telling you right now, women. Stay away from extension cords. My, my wife rolled my extension cord into a ball. I just threw it in the garbage. You think I'm lying? I took it and I threw it in the garbage. There were so many twists and turns and, and balled up. There's one thing about an extension cord and a hose. It has to be rolled up properly. It's something women don't understand. I'm, I'm sick of it already. I really am. Anyway, I painted the Mustang. I painted it like a satin black. Uh. Uh. I don't know, man. I used to be one of these asshole car washers. Do you ever see these guys? Two buckets. Clay bar. Uh, chamois, um, um, special, uh, what, what was it called? Uh, carnuba wax, oh, um, this type of thing, uh, Meguiar's compound, oh, you know, that was a very sad part of my life, like when I was into car washing. I mean, period, end of sentence. Something se seems so important when you're younger, you know? Like hygiene. Now it's just like, I don't know. How many times can I shit my pants before somebody notices? I want to thank my dog for... Uh, Using the very front door of the shed as a as his own personal toilet bowl. That's right. I feel like my life is like a, <clears throat> like a never ending. What is it called when when they storm a castle? It's like a never-ending one of those. And you're constantly trying to defend the castle. You're getting attacked from every angle. That's what life is like. I mean, not to be depressing. <clears throat> I don't know. I take my Mustang out and I drive very aggressively. I, but I got nowhere to go. Because I honestly, I take my car out and I like do a circle around the neighborhood. It's pathetic. I go to the gas station, rev the engine, put gas in the car. Hopefully somebody asks me about the car. Hey, is that a 65? 66. That's it. I mean, you know, it's awesome. Shifting gears. I tell you what, I, everybody wants to tell you about the romantic side of uh, manual shift the gear, transmission. Okay. Until you get into bumper and bu bumper to bumper traffic. And then you went through a hell of the likes of which you can't even imagine. I tell you what, I got stuck in about an hour and 15 minutes worth of bumper to bumper traffic. And I tell you, there was no less than, than 1500 clutch engagements. I was ready to, I don't know, 
just get out of the car and walk away. I'm 47 years old. This like my, my leg, I like the, the lactic acid buildup in my leg. Outstanding. And then, then, then you just theater of the mind of what's happening to the clutch when all this is going on. You're like, rawr, rawr. like it's like, is the car gonna fucking overheat because we're in traffic? Let's face it. You know, all these things going through your mind. And then, and then sweating into the seat. I'm like the whole time I'm sweating into the seat. I get out of the car show sometimes, and I always wear like a t-shirt. So the back, the back half of my shirt is like wet t-shirt contest. That's right. So you could see the like my my lack of uh, lat development, lack of any type of uh, you know anterior deltoid, the complete complete lack of uh, trapezius muscles here. It's just like uh, just a big flat white uh, like a seal. Like a seal with a fucking t-shirt on. That's about it. And then I roll. My, I go to when I go to the car show. When I when I eventually got there, then I like to roll my little top cigarette. You kidding me? Sit in my Mustang like I'm. And I'm rolling my cigarette and I'm waiting for somebody to come up to me and be like, "What is that pot?" And I'll be like, "No, tobacco." Now fucking hit the road, okay? I roll my little cigarette, I get out of the car, I light my little cigarette, and I walk around like I'm cool. You know what I like to do at a car show? I like to walk like a couple cars down and turn around and see if anybody's checking out my car. That's how pathetic. I'm like, oh, what does everybody think? I'm like, do. Oh, look at that, somebody's looking. I was like, oh wait, he's not looking. He, he's lo looking for a place to take a shit. It's true. Nobody, nobody looks at the fucking car. I'm like, uh, I'm always happy. It's like an old lady or something like that. But then she's like checking a lipstick in the, in the window. I'm like, ah, oh, she's not even looking. Like somebody look at my car, please. What do I gotta do? Anyway, I, I seen a guy in the '93 Cougar, right? And uh, I, I happen to know about the car, so I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna talk shit with him. I'm like, uh, 93, huh? He's like, yeah, 93. I said, anniversary edition. He goes like this. I said, 5.0, high output. He's looking at me like, right on, brother. We're now we're heading to for a high five. And I tell him, dual exhaust. And he's like, fuck yeah. yeah. So here's the kicker. He's got the hood open, and he's got no less than five trophies under there. And I said, this is my kind of bullshit artist. I said, number one, nobody ever in their right mind gave you a trophy for this car. <laughs> Where'd you buy him? Amazon got him now? I'm going to get a couple car trophies. I would never put a trophy on my car. I love these guys that bring their cars down there, and then they put out, like, like a whole a whole picture booklet of them and their family next to the car. This is me when I was a little dickweed and I bought the car. And he's with his girl. Like, put away the picture album. We want to see the fucking car. Okay? Not your wife in a paisley skirt from 72. Oh, they got the little cutouts next to it, like uh like a waitress. Servant Hamburgers. I get that thing out. I, I feel like giving that thing a stunner. And they say, hey, old man, get you and your lawn chairs out of here. Car show people, you, 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 gotta, you gotta cool down. You gotta cool down. Oh, the guy's got the blown up, like, uh, production sheet for the car. Oh, it's got power brakes. What was that option? You know, this type of thing. Put it away. Put it a goddamn way. I said number and number two. The guy, there's a guy out there with the Corvette. The, what is it? The ZR, the ZR1, the Z06, the the very expensive Corvette. He's got the trophies in front of it, and the trophies like on 
on asphalt to begin with, so the surface is all rocky and whatnot. And the trophies look like they're gonna fall on the hood of the car. I'm like, it takes one bozo to walk by, or a dog, because there's a lot of dogs at the event, knock the trophy right into the hood and scratch the paint. People don't think. People come out of the house and they don't think. It's like this, this car is getting by on the grace of God right now. Anyhow, that's it. And, you know, I talked to the guy, the cougar guy, and I'm, and he's got these trophies, and I'm like, this, this isn't on the up and up. It's not. Guys, we are like, we're 42 minutes in here, guys. What are we, what are we doing with our lives? Well, I tell you what, I brought out a sack, okay? A lot like our friend Santa. And in this sack is the venerable PS4, guys. You know, you love it. I know I love it. I love the PS4. And well, you know what else I love? I love chicks and I love tanks. So let's take a little look at this game right here. What do we call it? We call it, I don't know, Broads and Panzer. Picture, picture time. Hit me. It's picture, picture time. Wow, thank you for letting me play. All right, we, these are some egregious loading times. Oh, good God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and, and. No, uh, no. All right, come on, girls. We, we got to get started here. <laughs> oh my God, what have we done? What happened? I don't know what just happened. Okay. Training movement. Yes. I kind of dig the soundtrack. I get what they're going for. Oh shit. Alright. Here we go. Operating tank, let's go. Okay. Oh, oh, let's go. That's fine. Oh boy. Wow, looking good. How do we shoot? Oh boy, that's how we shoot. 
Oh, this is all I need to know right now. Where's the checkpoint? Why are we on the road? I can go anywhere I want to go. Or can I? Let's try going up here. Let's see how awesome this game really is. Oh my god, come on! Come on, you got it, you got it, go, go, go! Hold on. This way. Okay, maybe not. Jesus Christ! Alright, I'm, I'm getting familiar with the camera. Oh, baby! Oh, there's the checkpoint, okay. No, 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 I'm steering with my turret. Hold on. I would have shoot at somebody for crying out loud. Where's the checkpoint? What? I want to fight other tanks for crying out, Crin. All right, what is going on here? Okay. So what I like we got some experience. I mean we got a skirt here. I mean what's round two? Okay, train beginner training battle. Yes. Yes. Now, from what I understand, this tank... Oh, here we go. I gotta crank the volume. I don't need to know the buttons, honey. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. It's that dude! Am I hitting this thing? Or am I out of range or something? Oh, okay, there it goes. How about this guy over here? I wish I knew what she was saying. Hold on, here we go. Ooh, ooh. Start 
lot of, I kind of really enjoy this game actually. And We got a new tank, guys. Nice. Yes, yes. Do we get to use the new tank? Opposing teams. Okay. Again, we don't need. We're highly trained. Right. Oh shit! Come on, get on. This guy's got to be done. Oh, he's out of here. down superb you're damn right come on what a fucking game <sighs> nice level three class ten Coming in. Wow. Yeah, but where where can I use it? What like how can I select the other tank? Now where do we go? I'm done with training. Now where do you go? Oh, this, is, this is the same shit. Ah, jeez, this is the same shit. I don't know, we're too good for them. <sighs> okay, you can turn off now, please. Whenever you're ready, that's fine with me. You can turn off now. Thank you.
Guys, do you, do, do, do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K face! We'll see you next time. Guys, the Patreon show is hooting! No, it's the truth, man. It's the truth. I think we're at 76 Advices Program episodes. Guys, we're at a thousand shows on the YouTube channel. Did you know that? We just surpassed a thousand shows. I mean, fucking A. Fucking A. Guys, the Patreon channel. By the way, we turned off the in-roll uh, advertisements. That's right. So uh, why don't you go to Patreon? No, guys, it's the Advices Program. This is the email address, okay? Put Advices in the header, okay? And you come to me with your problems. I mean, you want to talk about problems, check this out. So all of a sudden, these hags, you get them. We call them, we call them Long Island Sweat Hogs. <laughs> women's soccer, who's watching? Oh, like, the, the, so the women's soccer team, the U.S. women's soccer team is out, so what happened? Two, more, two TVs got shut off in the United States of America. Fuck them all, big and small, that's what I say. Get your shit out of here, turn on the goddamn lights, and keep your fucking mouth shut during the meetings. <laughs> I know, I know. That's about it. Guys, email me. We'll solve all your problems, just like... And we also have the show, You're the Boss, where you... Write to me, you insult me. Yeah, you tell me, you dumb son of a bitch. I don't know, you goofy, you, you nose, you look like a ghost of Tom. This type of thing. And then you tell me the game you want to see me play. And that's what we do. We play the games you want to play. It's out of my hands. All right, so if the show sucks, your fault. No, it's a lot of fun, guys. Okay. Patreons, thank you so much for the support. We'll see you next time.